Hello, my name is Lauren Aselta, and in this presentation, I will discuss my research on the characterization and fabrication of organic electrochemical transistors. This video will highlight the steps taken along with our findings and analysis. The purpose of this research is to identify the best practice for fabricating and conducting measurements of OECTs and then apply the best practice to the measurement of a new material. In this first phase of research, we developed and optimized the protocols for measuring transconductance by adapting methods developed for thin film transistors. This involved developing PDMS wells for holding the electrolyte and gate electrode and then refining protocols to minimize gate leakage. With the best developed practice, experiments were performed to explore the variation in C star mu of a new polymer and explore the performance as a function of film annealing and polymer molecular weight. Well, what exactly is an OECT? Um, an OECT is a transistor that's quite similar to the field effective transistors, except it uses an electrolyte between the channel and gate as opposed to conventional dielectric with dipoles. It is a cost-effective thin film device with a powerful charge transport. It also has a conducting polymer layer which facilitates in the modulation of channel conductivity. It amplifies a tiny input current when immersed in electrolyte and requires low operating voltage. A defining quality that makes an OECT quite unique is that it's stable in aqueous environments. We can augment them to be compatible with human tissue, which opens doors to many biological applications. An OECT can also act as a transducer by detecting a change in electrochemical potential. The device mechanism operates by the electrical, electrochemical doping of the polymer active layer, resulting in the modulation of channel conductivity. The result of this is the generation of a drain source current. The channel current can be modulated by the gate voltage, directly amplifying the electrochemical signal. Here are some real-world applications for OECTs, most of which are biological applications due to its compatibility with human tissue. It can be used in detection devices, biosensors, wearable circuits, and can also be used to detect DNA, ions, pathogenic organisms, metabolites, and many more. The OECT is comprised of, a, of glass as the substrate, gold and chromium as the conducting plate, and an ion conducting polymer superstrate as a top coat for the device. In this image, you can see a batch of chips freshly plated with the shadow mask, which almost works as a stencil, still placed on the top. The structure of the OECT is comprised of three terminals, the source, drain, and gate. The source and drain are connected by a polymer layer, which is in contact with the electrolyte. The electrode is another fundamental component because it is in contact with the gate and submerged in the electrolyte. The source, drain, and gate components of the OECT are standard across all devices, but the fabrication and design of the plating will vary. In my research, I dealt with the mass design comprised of four different channels, all varying in different lengths, ranging from 100 micromillimeters to 400 micromillimeters for linear scaling. We developed and augmented protocols for measuring transconductance by testing out methods developed for thin film transistors and making them more suitable for our devices. We cut small wells out of PDMS to function as an electrolyte reservoir in the center of the chip. In this top image, you can see the reservoir area restriction is circled in red. The bottom image was taken during a series of experiments to improve the PDMS protocol by implementing clips to prevent leakage. An important step in determining C star mu is collecting data from our electrical measurements in the form of a transfer curve. This type of data is the most common method for OECTs. The current between the source and drain is plotted as a function of the applied gate voltage. We will use the slope of the transfer curve, also known as the transconductance, to solve for C star mu. We can measure the transconductance of an OECT with the formula shown here in equation 1, where the channel width is W, length is L, film thickness is D, and as well as the gate bias and threshold voltage. 
Equation 2 is also an equation for transconductance, but it's expressed as a ratio of the change of current at an output port over the change in current over the input port. So for my research, I used equation 1 to solve and isolate C star mu. C star mu is a vital property of an OECT because it's the numerical value that characterizes the material properties. In organic electronics, the selection of materials can be the determining factor of the effectiveness of your device's electronic mobility. As mentioned before, the four different lengths on each chip is for linear scaling. This form of the equation is what I use to solve for C star mu. To identify which methods and materials result in the highest performance, a series of experiments were conducted. We systematically looked at the gate leakage as a function of the excess materials. We used the term dodging, which basically means scraping away extra substrate to isolate the channels and increase the chip performance. The addition of nail polish is just one extra step to ensure the isolation. Next, we, implied, we applied the best practice to our science. We tested three solutions and looked at their behavior as a function of film annealing. This slide is taking a closer look at which ion conducting polymer we used for this research. We used a new polymer, P3MEEMT, and explored the performance as a function of film annealing and polymer molecular weight. Here is the data we obtained in regards to annealing the, temp the chips with temperatures varying from 75 degrees to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Upon analysis, it was clear across many chips that the mobility decreased at 175 degrees. We also noted that C star mu varies very little between 75 degrees to 145 degrees range. We discovered that the molecular weight of a polymer plays a big role in performance of an OECT. Our high molecular weight batch outperformed our low molecular weight batch. The high molecular weight batch was 1.4 times more effective than the low molecular weight. We also discovered that the freshness of the solution plays a significant role in OECT performance. The batch that was created and tested promptly was six times more effective than that of the aged solution. Moving forward, I'd like to develop an impedance-based measurement of C star to separate it from mu. In this application, impedance means to put a small AC wiggle on the gate voltage and measure the amplitude and phase of the wiggle in both the gate current and the drain current. The wiggle in the gate current can tell you C star mu, which, or sorry, C star, which is how much charge was added to the film for a little change in gate voltage, and the wiggle in the drain current can tell you the mobility. In addition, I'd like to repeat the same test but with a little bit more variance and also look into creating a better system for securing PDMS wells. Well, thank you so much for listening and a special thank you to my mentor, Dr. Lee Richter, for his guidance and for making all of this possible. Thank you very much.